coming up next on Hoops Arkansas Football. Highlights from all across the state, including undefeated Duke at Dollar Way, 6A state title contender Lake Hamilton at Benton, and a battle of unbeaten Earl at Hazen. We're at the halfway point of the high school season, and nobody covers it like Hooten's Arkansas Football next. Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Good morning and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football from the Marketplace Grill. I promise you, we're going to make you real hungry before this is all over, so stay tuned for that. And for great highlights from the fifth week of Arkansas's high school season, it's Hooten's Arkansas Football. We've got 30 minutes to get a bunch of games in, so we're going to get started with the big school highlights, and they're brought to you by Big Red Stores. We'll start at War Memorial Stadium, undefeated and untested Cabot, taking on the Catholic High Rockets and Cabot going for it on fourth down, but Wesley Stovall is stuffed by Catholic's Reed Thomas, and Catholic made him pay. Tyler Bartlett to Trevor Segrist, Catholic up 7 to nothing early. Here's Cabot again on fourth down again, and Sanford Bloomberg is stopped again. All of that in the first quarter, now to the second. Catholic coming back, Bartlett going deep to Paul Drake. The Rockets would kick a field goal to go up 10 to nothing, then disaster strikes with Catholic's defense. Look at Jen Shoemate knocking it loose. Andrew Coppola will scoop and go 40 yards. Catholic up by 17. Catholic would respond though. Bloomberg passing to Les McGregor. That made it 17 to 6. But Cabot committed three turnovers inside Catholic's 20. And you can't win like that. Final score, Little Rock Catholic 30, Cabot 12. From War Memorial to Jordan Stadium, Pine Bluff girls pumped up for undefeated Bryan in town. Pine Bluff tried to strike quick, but Sebastian Stargell is intercepted by Bryant's Adam Harris. The Hornets had three interceptions on the night, and this one sets up Austin Bradley's career-long 39-yard field goal that put Bryant up 9 to nothing. A little bit later, the Zebras' defense is going to score. Martez Glass steps in front of the pass, and Glass is gone. 60 yards down the sidelines, and this was a ball game for a while. It was 16 to 12, but just before halftime, Logan Parker finds Jake Jackson on the 10-yard touchdown. That was Jackson's second touchdown grab of the night, and the Hornets remain undefeated. Final score, Bryant 30, time bluff 12. In Faulkner County, Conway was up on North Little Rock 3 to nothing, but North Little Rock's on the move with Jonathan Dyer making some moves and a big gain all the way down to Conway's 3. Couple of plays later, North Little Rock's David Hope rolls right, throws left on the screen pass to Myron Williams. North Little Rock touchdown, it's 7 to 3, charging Wildcats. But on the ensuing kickoff, Conway's best offense may be its kick return team, Isaiah Jackson. We've seen him before, and look at him go again, cutting it all the way back across the field. 35-yard gain, that ignites the Wampus Cats. A few plays later, it's Jackson again this time. On the pitch around the end, he outraces North Little Rock. That gives Conway something to cheer about because it turns out to be the game winner. Final score, Conway 10, North Little Rock 7. Here's Hootens.com Class 7A rankings. Bentonville holds on to the number one spot after beating Fort Smith Northside for the third straight year. The Tigers have been ranked number one since Hootens Arkansas football hit the newsstands back on July the 4th. The rest of the top five is all new. Bryant moves up one spot. Harbor is up to number three after taking out Van Buren. Fayetteville won at Springdale for the first time since 1979 and moves up to number four. And there's the Russell Cyclones, which pulled off the upset shutting out Little Rock Central 23 to nothing. The Tigers dropped to number six with no offense. Southside, the defending state champs, lost late at Rogers. Fort Smith Northside with its loss to Bentonville, its first loss of the season, drops two spots, just like Cabot. The Panthers lost their first game at War Memorial Stadium against Little Rock Catholic, which is ranked number 12 this week. Then it's Conway with the victory over North Little Rock and Pine Bluff to round out the top 15. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. In Class 
6A, number three, Lake Hamilton, averaging 40 points per game, invading Benton. But Benton comes out, moving the chains early. Senior quarterback, Zach McCauley. He's your Sonic super teamer, hitting Garrett Parker with the pass, and Benton's moving the ball, but now on fourth and one. Disaster strikes. The snap flies over McCauley's head, and Lake Hamilton's Dylan McMahon is going to catch McCauley for the big loss, and the rest of the night would belong to Lake Hamilton. Running back Cole Oregon drives the ball inside the 10 before Benton's Josh Dodson and Sean Smith make the tackle. Two plays later, Lake Hamilton quarterback Phillip Butterfield. He's a good one. Bulldozes in from a yard out. Butterfield had 287 total yards and three touchdowns as Lake Hamilton piles up the offense. 444 yards on the night while holding Benton to less than 200. Final score, Lake Hamilton 40, Benton 0. Staying in the 6A South, Watson Chapel off to a rough start this year, but the Wildcats jumped on Little Rock Hall Friday night. Watson Chapel up 27 to nothing at the break, but here comes the Hall High Warriors in the third quarter. Quarterback Ricky Thomas making his first start. Can't find anything downfield, and he's on the run. Can you believe this guy's just a freshman? Now, that's first down yardage for Hall, and on the next play, it's more Thomas. He spots Trey Henderson over the middle, and Hall is moving the chain. Same drive, Hall's Larry Mathon finds a crease. He led the Warriors with 71 yards rushing. Chapel's Nick Webster, Michael Sullivan, and Blake Sorey finally bring him down. But two plays later, from the Watson Chapel 2, the ball is loose, and Chapel's George Haney comes up with it. The Wildcat D recovered two fumbles and grabbed an interception Friday night. And on offense, Watson Chapel turns to senior standout quarterback Gordon Johnson. He gets Chapel out of the hole in a hurry. Here's a big one. Johnson to senior Quentin Marks, and Watson Chapel gets its first. First conference win. Final score, Chapel 33, Little Rock Hall 0. Here's Hootens.com Class 6A rankings. Texarkana has scored 82 points on the road over the past two weeks. West Memphis has won four in a row, and Lake Hamilton is undefeated at 5-0. and Forest City jumps up two spots after their fourth straight decisive victory. El Dorado is down to number five after losing to Texarkana on Friday night. Sheridan starts the second five after piling up 44 points on Park View. Big game with El Dorado next week in Grant County for Sheridan. Marion's number seven, then it's Jacksonville, Jonesboro, and Benton to round out the top ten. Watson Chapel's up two spots. Sylvan Hills won its first game, beating Windless Mountain home on Friday night. Searcy's lost 15 straight, and Little Rock Hall rounds out the top 15. Coming up next, it's more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from Class 5A are next. Hi, I'm Erica Cash from Bolivia, and more highlights are coming up on Hooton's Arkansas football. Let's go, Eagles! Yes. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Twin City Bank. We started with Class 5A highlights at Robinson. Some thought the Senators would have a shot against Pulaski Academy. Not. The Bruins up 35 to nothing at halftime when Robinson gets something going. Zach DeYamas hooking up with Kareem Norwood. That's Robinson's first score, making 35 to seven. But here comes PA quarterback Spencer Keith throwing it over the middle to Daniel Herrera. And there's Norwood with the big hit on defense. Robinson playing better in the second half. And on fourth down, Keith looking deep for Neil Barlow. But Norwood is there to knock it down for Robinson. Too little, too late though. Final score, PA 35, Robinson 7. Staying in West Little Rock, Christian led Bologna by 10 in the third quarter until Kevin Puckett hit Nathan Paul for a Bologna touchdown pass that made it 24 to 21. But Little Rock Christian comes back with Michael Dyer, just a sophomore seven yard run. And two plays later, Dyer on the halfback pass to Tyler Weddle. And that turned out to be a big score and a big ball game. The final, Little Rock Christian 38, Bologna 31. At J.A. Fair, the War Eagles wearing the blue against Magnolia's Panthers, who had their passing game going. Magnolia's senior quarterback Trevor Rogers had a big night. He finds classmate Tyler Dunlap across the middle here. Magnolia was up by 13 in the third quarter, looking to add to it. Look at Rogers stepping up in the pocket and firing down the middle again to Dunlap again. Magnolia's in the red zone, and from the one, Rogers will hand it to Eric Jones who scores Magnolia's fifth touchdown of the night. He would add a two-point conversion on the screen toss from Rodgers to wrap up the scoring. The final, Magnolia 35, 
Fair 14. Here's Hootons.com Class 5A rankings. The top seven stay the same. Greenwood still number one after a 14-point win at Harrison. Camden Fairview 5-0 and and ranks number two. There's Harrison, Batesville, and PA. Blyden will start the second five, and BB is undefeated, but the Badgers face their stiffest competition next month. Asylum Springs is eighth. There's Little Rock Christian and Magnolia headed to Camden Fairview with the conference title on the line next week. Monticello moves up to number 11 after beating Little Rock McClellan by seven on Friday. Then it's Robinson, Bologna, Crossing, and West Helena. Hot Springs is ranked number 16. The Trojans have won three games in the final minutes, including a three-point overtime victory over Malvern on Friday. Number 17 win beat Green County Tech by 20 for its first win of the year. Then it's Lake Side, Nettleton, and Hope. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football class 4A highlights are next. It's Saturday morning, and you're watching Hooton's Arkansas football. Hi, I'm Ashley Whitfield from Glen Rose, and the Beavers always stay tuned for more Hooton's Arkansas football. <laughs> now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. We begin our Class 4A highlights in Pine Bluff, number five, Dollarway, playing host to number 10, Dumas, who was looking for its first win at Dollarway in 19 years. And Dumas was up 21 to nothing in the third quarter. Thanks to this guy, senior quarterback Kendall Council, he had 75 yards rushing on the night and passed for 147 more. That's Lathan Harris on the receiving end for Dumas. That's the way to finish off a play. More Council now. Council and the Dumas Bobcats racking up 402 yards yards at Dollar Way. Now on the same drive in the fourth quarter though. First and goal for Dumas. Council. He's playing with a lot of confidence on the sprint out. He finds his man, senior Brandon Berry. That's Berry's second touchdown of the night. 27 to nothing Dumas, but still a lot of time left. Dollar Way trying to get it going. Going up top. But there's Lathan Harris again with the interception. He's headed the other way, doing his best. Deion Sanders impersonation. 80-yard interception return. The Dumas D stole three picks on the night and grabbed two fumbles. And Dumas shuts down Dollarway to earn its first win over the Cardinals since 1991. Final score, Dumas 35. Dollarway zip. At halftime, at halftime, I challenge y'all. I challenge your manhood. And y'all rose up, fellas. I told you this ain't the same Bobcat team from last year. We slipped up one week and got a tie, but we still haven't given up a 12 points, fellas. Rise up. We got a big, big game this week. Yeah, we got to come back. back. We got to work hard, and we got to get ready for those lumberjacks. They had a homecoming queen at Pulaski Oak Grove, but they had their hands full with Duck Queen. That's the Queen Leopards in the white and J.J. Hendricks on the trap. 22-yard game that was set up at the Queen touchdown. And on the Leopards' next drive, number three, Kyle Atkins slipping behind Oak Grove secondary, and he's gone 61 yards for the Queen touchdown. That makes it 14 to them. And a little later, it's more Atkins and the Queen. This time on a fake punt, he picks up the first down. The Queen was up 21 to nothing at halftime and holds on to win at Oak Grove. Final score, the Queen. 21, Oak Grove, 19. The Bald Knob Bulldogs at Lone Oak and trailing by seven points in the third quarter, but here comes Bald Knob sophomore Gabe Gavin streaking up the sidelines. He's to midfield, and that's where Trenton Spencer cuts him down for Lone Oak. 42-yard kickoff return. Bald Knob feeling good, but Lone Oak would shut him down in the second half. Number 51, that's Joel Harris just crushing quarterback Chad Cates. The Lono D flexed its muscles, sacking Cates five times and holding Bald Knob to minus 16 yards rushing on the night. Lono's offense not too shabby either. Jack Rabbit quarterback Rollins Elam throwing deep. The Bulldogs tip it up, but Lono's Clarence Harris has it. Harris caught 14 passes for 218 yards and three touchdowns, including that 37-yarder. Now still in the third, Lono up by 13 now and on the move again. Elam passing this time to Daniel Smith and Lono knocking at the door. Elam's a good quarterback. He completed 27 of 47 for 443 yards and three touchdowns for Lone Oak. He also ran for two, including this five-yarder. Final score, Lone Oak 45, Bald Knob 14. 
Pearsons.com Class 4A rankings. Warren stays number one. Lumberjack receiver Jarius Wright scored four touchdowns in the first half of a 40-6 win over Star City on Friday night. Nashville's two, then it's Newport and CAC. The Mustangs head to Nashville next week with the 7-4A conference title on the line. Dumas starts the second five, jumping up four spots. The Bobcats play host to top-ranked Warren next week. Farmington has won four in a row, then it's Boonville, Ozark, and Dollar Way. Highland Rebels are number 11 and are 4-0-1 this year after winning an Osceola by six on Friday. Pokey is number 12, then it's The Grove, Osceola, and Lone Oak. Hamburg is 16, and Valley View is undefeated. Jumping up to number 17, the Blazers play host to Pocahontas and a big one next week. Coming up next, it's more of Hootons Arkansas football. Class 3A and 2A highlights are straight ahead. Hi, I'm Ashley Reese from Clarendon, and you're watching Hootons Arkansas football. Go Lions! Now, more of Hootons Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. There's always going to be obstacles the rest of your life. You make a statement to yourself, each and every one of you individually tonight, that when them come, I'm going to bow up. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. I'm going to bow my neck, I'm going to stick my face in there, and I'm going to fight for every inch. Yes, yes sir. Okay, let's go. Let's go! Ryzen's coach Toddy is right. you got to bow up, especially when you're taking on number two, Glenn Rose. The Glen Rose Beavers in town sporting possibly their best team of all time. And the Beavers on the move early. Senior quarterback Nathan Jones with the play fake, and he's on the loose on the Beavers' first drive into Ryzen territory before the Wildcats' Cole Duncan and Nathan Wells bring him down. A few plays later, Jones on the sprint, and he spots his man. Jay Keith found a spot in the end zone. Glen Rose 7, Ryzen nada. Still in the first quarter. Glen Rose has got the ball again, and the Beavers strike quick. Jones going deep. It's a little wobbly, but it's on the mark. Glen Rose senior Michael Blancher. He caught just two balls on the night, but this one was a doozy. 71-yard touchdown for Glen Rose, and Ryzen couldn't close the gap the rest of the night. Final score, Glen Rose 50, Ryzen 28. From Ryzen to Mayflower now, the Eagles wearing all purple for their two AAA showdown against Harding Academy. Harding Academy comes out throwing Matt Lincoln to senior Chase Ransom. A little bit later on Harding's drive, Lincoln firing to him, six foot three, Lance Carr for the first down. Carr, that's a big name at Harding. And a little bit later, it's Lincoln looking the other way. The senior Michael Hickman, he bobbles it, but he's got it. Then it's Lincoln. Back paddling, dumping it off to Ty Finley. He's going to rumble inside the Mayflower 10 before Mikel Montbia drives him out of bounds. Harding Academy looking good early. Lincoln going to Finley for his first of two touchdowns of the night. Look at the Harding Academy wall of blockers over there. Wildcat 7, Mayflower zip. Now on the kickoff. It's Lance Carr getting tricky, coming up big again, popping up the kick. Harding jumps on it, and the Wildcats are back in business. But not for long. Two plays later, Lincoln rolling right, intercepted by Maltbia. This guy's a good one, playing in the secondary and at quarterback for Mayflower. And here he is on offense, rolling to his right and firing hard to Brian McKnight. McKnight makes it down inside Harding's 20, and that sets up Gavin Pace for Mayflower's first touchdown. It was tied 7-7 to at the half, but the second stanza belonged to Harding Academy. Final score, Wildcats 34, Mayflower 13. Hawkside got a scare at England last week. Friday night, happy homecoming for the Miners. Boxside led smack over 40 to nothing at halftime. And this is Ryan Dunlap taking the pitch from Aaron Mathis. Dunlap had 248 yards and a career high five touchdowns for Boxside on Friday night. A little bit later, the Buckaroos get the ball and drive into Boxside territory in the fourth quarter now. Chris Hodges, he used to play offensive line for smack over. He plows ahead for a nice game. Hodges had 75 yards rushing. And on the next play, smack over's total. Tony Burks zooms into the end zone. That's the Buckaroos' first score of the night. Burks had 85 yards and would score again, but it wasn't enough. The final, Boxside 47, back over 14. Well, we take care of each other like this, guys. We're a football team. And next, the Boxside Miners have a rise. Yeah! Holes were there. Anybody could run through those holes. And thank God for my giving talent. It's the first time I ever scored five touchdowns. Here's Hootons.com Class 3A rankings. Shiloh Christian has been ranked number one.
for 22 straight weeks. Glenn Rose is undefeated. Charleston's up to number three after holding off Pottsville 28 to 14. Then it's Bogsite and Harding Academy. Atkins starts the second five, followed by Corning, Gerd, and Prescott, and Mayflower. Mayflower lost two players for next week. Quarterback Mikkel Maltbia and running back Deshaun Bagby were ejected late Friday night against Harding Academy and will not make the trip to Cave City next week. Number 11, Hoxie earned a 13 to nothing forfeit victory over Barton and has rescheduled his homecoming against Brinkley. Number 12, Perryville moves to 5-0 with a 39-8 win over Cave City. Undefeated Marshall jumps up to number 13 with a showdown next week at Harding Academy. Lafayette County is 14 and Mountainburg is 15. The Dragons beat previously undefeated Green Forest 28-6. And next week, Mountainburg plays host to Shiloh. Harrisburg is 16, followed by Green Forest, Lamar, and Lavaca checks in at number 19 after its second straight conference loss. And there's East Poinsett County moving into the top 20. Last year, East Poinsett County finished 1-9. In Class 2A now, Earl at Hazen in a battle of undefeated teams. Hazen wearing the purple and running right at Earl with number two at senior Terry Loudermilk. Hazen with this drive starting in the first quarter, continuing into the second quarter, and it's sophomore Darius Malsby running up the middle for Hazen before Earl's Michael Wilson makes the tackle. That sets up the first score of the night. It's going to be Hazen's Loudermilk going over the top. Loudermilk and Mosby both would run for more than one. 100 yards Friday night, and Hazen knocks off Earl. Final score, Hornets 20, Earl 14. In Desark, the Eagles trailed Clarendon 13-8 in the second quarter. Desark wearing the green and looking to go ahead. Ronald Dunlap, 15 carries, 125 yards on the night, coming up just short of the goal line. Now how about a Clarendon goal line stand? Stephen Boston plugs the hole, and Clarendon's T.J. Julian, Clay Sane, and Tabodrick Lee make the stop. Coach Tim Harper's Desert team denied, and here comes Clarendon with Lee playing quarterback now. He throws to Chase Julian. He's a scrapper, but Desert's defense would step up too, and the Eagles get one more shot just before halftime, and look at Desert's quarterback. That's Nathan Holloway. He totaled 203 yards offense of the night, 93 yards rushing, and completed 7 out of 10 passes. Watch this rolling right. Nice touch to Kevin Walker. Holloway pass for 110 yards on the night. Final score, Eagles 30, Clarendon 13. The Hootens.com Class 2A Top 20 looks like this. Top-ranked Junction City hammers Hermitage 55-6. Number two, Bearden holds Parker's Chapel to 71 yards Friday night and wins 43-0. Hootens.com predicted Mount Ida would beat Jesseville by five. That's exactly what happened. Number four, Murfreesboro shut out Bigelow 34-0. And Strong is 4-1 on the year after beating Northland. Jesseville has lost close ones the past two weeks to Murfreesboro and Mount Ida. There's Des Arc and Hazen climbs up eight spots to number 10 after winning in overtime over Earl. There's the Bulldogs, followed by Danville, Spring Hill, and undefeated Derricks. Number 15 ranked March Tree beat Cross County by two touchdowns and takes control of the 3AA. Woodlawn, Clarendon, Cross County, the Hackett Hornets, and Mountain Pine round out the top 20. For our State Farm Play of the Week, we take you back down to Ryzen. The Glen Rose Beavers and quarterback Nathan Jones going deep to Michael Blanchard. 71-yard touchdown. That's our State Farm Play of the Week coming up in December. We'll be naming a State Farm Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year as well as a Coach of the Year for every classification at the prestigious State